just literal seconds before I press record, a bunch of crows start having a gang brawl outside. And I love crows, but I'm dead against gang warfare, so I'm going to have to wait for this to uh, pass over before I can really kick off. Something a bit different today. Let's see how good I can be when talking about hardware-y stuff. Hmm. I'm from the days when capturing video of a video game involved using high-cost specialist equipment that, while robust, was fiddly and imprecise. Genuinely, the grabbing kit we used at my old job was manufactured by one digital foundry, we're talking over a decade ago now. There was lots of converting HDMI to DVI and making sure sound channels were set up through analog outputs and fiddling with frame rates to make sure it wasn't resulting in glitches and artifacts all up the wazoo. Also, you could watch brief videos on, I don't know, Blair. Over the years, this situation has, as you may have guessed, changed significantly. We now have a wealth of options for grabbing game footage in super high def mega crisp forms to the point where modern consoles and most recent gaming PCs with a half decent GPU can grab footage themselves out of the box and the ever present free option of OBS is actually good usable and the viable option for many a video maker. Video grabbing has gone from specialist grade stuff to an expected feature. Of course, to get the absolute best quality, or if you're capturing from consoles, you're going to want to go for a standalone bit of kit. Yes, Playstations and Xboxes and Switches can grab their own footage, but it's not very practical to use in video making. No, you'll want a device made purely to grab video from the signal you route through it, spewing out the highest quality footage you can be bothered to grab. I have a few bits and pieces here, an Avamedia Live Gamer 4K, which rarely gets used, an Elgato 4K 60S Plus, which never gets used, and a Magewell USB Capture AIO, which gets used all the time and is one of the best capture devices I've ever owned, and I've owned a lot. But I'm not here to talk about those today. Today I wanted to look at the lower end of things, the stuff people might be tempted to call cheap shit. And believe me, most of this stuff is bottom of the barrel cheap, with prices topping out at £45 for one device. <laughs> yes, friends, I went on AliExpress and spent 100 quid on five capture cards to do a bit of a shootout. We'll find out if any of them are worth the money, and if any of them are viable alternatives to your Elgatos and Avamedias and lovely, lovely Magewells of the world. I wanted to look specifically at capturing game footage via HDMI at a resolution of 1080p and a maximum frame rate of 60fps. So not mind-blowing, but more than good enough for making a video or 12. And bear in mind I'm not an expert, I will not be analysing frame by frame, I am still not Digital Foundry. This is meant more as a bit of advice for the everyday user, not the resolution bores of the world. So first, the tale of the tape. What did I actually buy? Well, here we go. Enjoy these names. A 4K video capture card, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, HDMI compatible grabber recorder for PS4 game, DVD camcorder, camera recording, live streaming. It's like an Elgato cam link, but for £6.39. A Hagibis Type-C video capture card, HDMI compatible to USB 1080p HD game record for PS4, 5 Switch live streaming broadcast camera. USB-C, so surely a fancier bit of kit that works well. For £10.62. A Rules 4K 60Hz HDMI video capture card TV loop 1080p game recording plate live streaming box USB 2.0 3.0 grabber for PS4 camera. It claimed its 60fps mode was unstable, all for a mere £19 and 9 pence. Wait, shit, no, £19.69, I was wrong, I was wrong! A 4K USB 3.0 video capture card, HDMI compatible 1080p 60fps HD video recorder grabber for OBS capturing game card live. The most generic capture card in the world for £19 and a penny. And the most expensive one, an EasyCap 321 Game Link RAW. That wasn't its name on AliExpress, but given it's the one that actually has a name, I figured I'd use it. And it was £45.34. All those prices include tax and delivery, and of course they might cost something different were you to buy them right this second, but that's what I paid for them in the middle of 2021. Let's just circumvent the muck here. 
these first three cards, garbage. At least for game capture. The cheapest one, as expected, managed 30 frames per second at 1080p. That was expected. The other two, both the Type-C device and the Rules one, both claimed they could hack 1080p at 60 frames per second. They couldn't. All could do 720p60 using the MJPG color space compression format, but I was looking for a minimum of 1080 60. So after playing Super Mario Brothers for a bit with all three cards, I had the three failures summarily executed. There's no point in carrying on the charade. Let's stick with those that at least hit the bare minimum, you know? Moving on. Testing a few different games from a few different generations seemed to be the way to go, though worth restating here I was looking solely at HDMI, so original retro hardware will have to be converted to get anything from any of these. And then you might struggle. But hey, what it did lead to was things like Super Mario World on the Super NT, which captured really nicely using the easy cap, smooth and with true colours and sound I'm unlikely to be playing here, it pretty much nailed it. Which is more than can be said for the generic card, which thanks to its inability to capture at a usable frame rate in the YUY2 colour space, more on that later, came out with this mess of oversaturated colour and, while it was hitting 60 frames per second according to all the tools measuring the frame rate, it recorded this fairly choppy mess that did look much closer to the 30 frames per second mark. And would you believe it, it was the same story across all the games tested. Sonic the Hedgehog on the Easy Cap and Sonic the Hedgehog on the Non Easy Cap. Marvel vs. Capcom seemed a good way to test hyper colourful action with a lot of colour spaffed all over your screen and. It was. The Easy Cap again performed admirably, showing off pretty much all of the fine detail on Capcom's arcade classic, here played on a mister, while the non Easy Cap card again proved a letdown, choppy and oversaturated. Spoiler, it was like that every time. Except for in Gran Turismo 2, at least, where the non Easy Cap card at least got the frame rate thing right. But that's because GT2 runs at 30 FPS natively, so. Yeah. And again, oversaturated colours thanks to the MJPG colour space and compression. Modern games? Sure. Why not? Here's the ultra modern. Oh good god, it's six years old. Metal Gear Solid 5. First up on the non easy cap card. Guess what? It looks oversaturated. Guess what else? The frame rate is choppy and inconsistent. What a gigantic surprise. But again, the Easy Cap card managed to grab footage that wouldn't look out of place in a professional video made by a video making hero like me, Bransfield, the hero of this story. It's YUY2, so not the best colour space and compression you can get, but honestly, this stuff is largely indistinguishable from the 444 colour space RGB stuff, so it matters little. Oh god, sorry. Almost went full digital foundry there. Oh, I'm gonna have to pull back from the edge of nerdery. I also forgot how to play Metal Gear Solid 5, but let's ignore that point for now. The point is, the Easy Cap continued to do a fine job of handling any 1080p stuff I threw its way. Last of all, I decided to experiment a bit with a few settings. Tekken 2 on PS1 here being recorded through the Easy Cap at 1080p using the YUY2 color space and compression setting. 60 frames per second. Absolutely spot on. Turns out the non Easy Cap can use YUY2 too. Let's see what that's like at 10. Oh god, good god, that's a maximum of five frames per second. It looks the part when still, but in motion it's. Well, it's barely in motion. And that's what cheap hardware does, or doesn't do. What cheap hardware does, does do, do though, is a full 60 frames per second recording if you knock it down to 720p like here. 
It's still an oversaturated mess, but at least it can hit that full frame rate, and the same is true of all the cards I summarily executed earlier on. 720p is absolutely doable with a capture card costing less than seven pounds. It'll just look like garbage. So is the easy cap a big pile of honest to goodness goodness, which is honest about its abilities, unlike seemingly every other capture card on AliExpress? Well, not really. It can do most of what it claims, as we've seen here, but I wasn't able at all to get any 4K video recorded using it. The settings are there, the options are available, but it all resulted in a no signal warning, regardless of the device I connected and the cables I used. So don't go looking for this to be any kind of 4K recorder. What it surprisingly can do, though, is when you knock things down to the worse than YUY2 color space and compression setting of NV12, is record at 120 frames per second 1080p. I tested that, it works fine, and it's a nice little novelty and sort of future-proofing to have. But again, I wouldn't buy the easy cap specifically for a slightly more advanced and modern feature like that. Just for my own sense of satisfaction and for comparison's sake, here's the live game of 4K capturing Forza Horizon 4 at 1080p because 4K would break my computer. Now here's Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5 using the Elgato 4K 60S Plus, originally captured at 4K with HDR and all that novelty fun, so if the colours look off it's because I've done bad SDR conversion therapy, or whatever it's called. And if you've seen any of my previous videos you'll be familiar with its work, here's the Magewell USB Capture AIO handling some of its everyday nonsense, Tekken 2 on an original PS1 console at 960p because it's a better resolution and the AIO can actually handle it via PS1 Digital. It's true that the more you pay, the better you get. But do you get hundreds of pounds worth better? I think that's a harder one to justify, honestly. And your mileage may vary as different capture cards have different system requirements when it comes to the PC you use. 1080p at 60 frames per second isn't the most taxing for modern CPUs, and any GPU of the past handful of years will absolutely rinse grabbing at that frame rate and resolution, but it is still worth noting. All the same, if you've got a bit of money saved or otherwise available to spend, my personal recommendation would be to up the ante a bit. For around 100 quid, you can get a workhorse like the Avamedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus, which I used for a number of years. Or for a bit more cash, you can grab an Elgato HD60S Plus, which I hear is good too. But, and it is as big a butt as my big butt, if you have a small amount of money set aside and your computer can't quite handle grabbing purely via OBS, the free free route to success, if your computer chugs and drops frames and just refuses to cooperate, then actually I could see the EasyCap 321 Game Link role working for you. For £45 you get a card that can actually hit 1080p 120 frames per second and easily manages 1080 60 using the better than MJPG YUY2 encoding, so your captures don't look like oversaturated messes. The other card did work, no denying that, and £20 does feel like a wonderful bargain, but really just save up a bit more and get something significantly better than that. Whatever the case though, Two things remain true throughout all of this. One, my Magewell USB Capture AIO is the undefeated king of capture, as long as you don't care about 4K or HDR. And, I completely wasted a hundred quid making this video. Sweet! Speaking of not wasting money at all, my supreme level of thanks to my ever lovely, ever supportive patrons on Patreon for their ever loving support. Special thanks to this lovely lot who take up residence in the fantastic Fiverr or above category. And even specialer thanks to these fine folks, one's a dog, for their higher tier support. It scares me that you do this, but that doesn't mean I'm not incredibly grateful. Lola Osman, Paintball Magazine PBM, Takara Hoshi. You can support too, just follow the link below. Hey, eh? hey, eh? pointing. Thanks for watching. Please don't buy any capture card that costs less than £45. You'll be let down completely. Bye!